we've been in the, the book of Joshua, and uh, we're looking at Joshua as God's road to success. In the first few verses, uh, it tells us Moses had died, and Joshua was carrying on the mantle. It was his job to, to take over at this point. And God promised them success. And the, every place they put their foot upon would be, would be given to them. And, and to promise success, the only thing is God said, well, now you've got to go in and you've got to take the land. You've got to take the land. And last time we, we talked a little bit about, uh, in chapter 2, about a Rahab. Uh, they delayed three days because they sent spies into the land. And they, and we asked the question, why did they wait? Why did Joshua wait? And I, I, at the end of the series uh, last week, uh, we came to the conclusion that God has a heart for sinners. Rahab, whose epitaph is the prostitute or the harlot, was the one that had to come into the fold of Israel. And they sent spies into the land, and they went to her, and she accepted the Lord as the Lord God created heaven and earth. Instead of her polytheism and all that was going on in the land there, she became a convert. She wound up not only saving herself and her family, but in the end she becomes uh, in the line of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was all providential. There are no accidents, believe me, folks. God is providentially in control of everything. Everything. Today I want to look at the topic of God's road to success may sometimes seem a little like deja vu. Uh, for example, the question I have here is what is deja vu? I got an answer for filling out the thing. Here's your first blanks. It's that feeling of having already experienced the present situation. Ever been there? Anybody been there where you said, I think I've been through this before. Right? You been there? You felt that? So you know what this experience is. That's called deja vu. And uh, I think sometimes we go through spiritual deja vu events. In fact, I think we're going to have one in our text today. You see, God has given some pretty big success in the past. At the time of, of Joshua, probably the biggie, the biggie, was the parting of the Red Sea. <laughs> the nation of Israel had fled bondage in Egypt. They'd come up uh, to an obstacle in the way to going to the promised land. Obstacle in the way going down to Mount Sinai, where they get the law of God, the will of God, and then going on to the promised land. They came to this obstacle called the Red Sea. And the, the Egyptians were pursuing them because Pharaoh changed his mind. Didn't want to let the slaves go. I need them to build my cities. So he starts pursuing them, and there's a problem. We got, we got an obstacle in the way. And so God does the miraculous. He tells Moses to stand with his rod, put it out, and I love this verse where it says to Moses, stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. He put his rod out, great mighty wind blew, waters parted. I mean, this is miraculous stuff, folks. This, this is the big one, right? This is like the big one of the Old Testament. The wind is blowing across the ground and dries it up, so they walk across the next day and dry ground. You know the story. You better if you're here a year ago. We went through this a year ago. They went through on dry ground. Now, now the Egyptians think that they can go across on Israel's faith. So they go marching right down into the water across after them. And Moses on the other side, God said, put that rod out again. He puts it out again. And all the waters came back, crashing on them. The whole point is you can't get to the other side in someone else's faith. You realize that? <coughs> You've got to have your own faith to get to the other side. To get to the other side. This is the big one. I mean... Uh, you say, was there, do they get any bigger than this? Well, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead is a pretty big one. But do, do they get any bigger than this? This is a pretty big event. I want to suggest to you today, as the nation Israel is making their way to go in and take possession of the promises that God had made to them, that they experience some of God's deja vu. And in order to experience God's deja vu and success in your life, of uh, what he's done before that he'll do again, I think you have to do a few things. First thing you have to do is follow God's lead. Most of us are pretty stubborn and we want to do it our way. Or am I the only one here? Because you're chuckling, I know I'm not the only one here. If you hadn't chuckled there, I'd have thought, OK, 
okay, I am the only one here. <laughs> Most of the time we want to do God's way. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israel set out from Shittim where they were camping and went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing over the Jordan River. So I got them on the map there so you kind of know where they're at. They're going to go to Jericho eventually. And they got this obstacle in their way. It's not necessarily the Red Sea, but it is the Jordan River. And as we go through this passage, we're going to find it's at the harvest season and it's flooding. It's overflowing its banks. So they're on their way. They're on their march. They're stopped by the Jordan. <clears throat> After three days, the officers went through out the camp, giving orders. When you see the Ark of the Covenant, I love this expression, the Ark of the Covenant. Sometimes it's called the Ark of God. Sometimes it's called the Ark of the Covenant. It's a couple of places it's called the Ark of the Covenant of God. So see, even they abbreviated things. From the Ark of the Covenant of God, they abbreviated it down just one or the other. Sometimes they just refer to it as the Ark. But the Ark and the Psalms are made reference that this is the throne of God. When, when, when the tabernacle was set up, God came down into the tabernacle. And he dwelt above the two cherubim, above the mercy seat, above the, the box that's called the Ark of the Covenant. Inside the, the box was the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And God manifested his presence there in a brilliant, shining light that is called the Shekinah Glory. And when he was in the tabernacle, and when he was above the, the, the Ark of the Covenant, between the, the outstretched arms of the wings of the cherubim, this effulgence of glory, when that was going on on the outside, because you couldn't go in to see it. On the outside, there was a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. That pillar led the Israelites through the wilderness. We're coming to the end of their wilderness journey, so it's not the pillar that they're seeing at this point. They bring the ark, the throne of God out, and it is God's throne that they are to follow. See, it comes back to who's leading in your life. Is it me or is it God? Who's on the throne? God was to be on the throne, and God was to be the one that was leading. So after three days, the officers went throughout the whole camp, giving orders. When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests and the Levites carrying it, you are to move out from your position and follow it. You follow God. The question we have to ask yourself is, am I following God? Or am I doing my own thing? I can't answer that for anybody but myself. But if you want a deja vu experience of the presence, the mighty power of God in your life, then God's got to be the one leading, not following you. Next thing he says is Conse consecrate yourself. Consecrate yourself. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourself. The word consecrate means to, to be, become holy, make yourself holy. Five times alone in, the book, alone in the book of Leviticus, it says, Be holy, for I am holy. Be holy, for I am holy. You go to the New Testament, 1 Peter 1.16, Be holy, because I am holy. Holy means you set it apart from everything else. Now, I set this guy apart in red. He's set apart from all the rest. And the whole idea is you set it apart and you dedicate it to God. It's kind of like when they were to consecrate themselves, they're devoting themselves exclusively to God. That's what we need to do. I want a deja vu experience of God crashing into my existence. I, you know, I'm not facing the Red Sea. My, my problems are probably... I mean, I don't need the Red Sea part. That's not going to help me at all. But maybe I got... A relationship problem in my life. And there's an obstacle that's keeping me from having a good relationship with someone, a family member, a spouse, a child, someone. And I need, I need a deja vu experience where God splits wide open the obstacle so I can get through and connect. Or maybe it's with, with finances, or I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a social thing. Maybe it's an emotional thing. There's something there. I'm constantly depressed. And I need God to do a deja vu moment where he parts the Red Sea in my life 
so that I can get through the barrier and, and go into the promised land, occupy all the blessings, the land that flows with milk, milk and honey, the peace uh, that comes with dwelling where God wants me to be. And so he says, devote yourself to that. Some of the prophets said, you know, tell you that. You seek the Lord with all your heart. All your heart. Because when you seek the Lord with all your heart, He will be found by you. Amen. You got to, you got to take His lead, set yourself apart. You say, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to devote myself not to this world. <coughs> I'm going to devote myself to the Lord. In this consecration, He said to the priest, to the people, devote yourselves to the Lord. He said, priest, take up the Ark of the Covenant, pass out ahead of the people. Why? Throne of God. You're following God. And they took it up. They went ahead. And behind them, the people followed. And verse 7 says, The Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you, Joshua, in the eyes of all Israel, so they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. You know what he's saying here? Moses, you're going to have a deja vu moment. You're, you're going to have an experience that will be so great that people will be talking about it that you are you like the second Moses. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crash into life's experience with the miraculous for you, Mo, uh, Joshua, just like I did for Moses. The next part I see here is he's got to step out and then stand still. Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant when you reach the edge of the Jordan waters, go and stand in the river. At some point, you have to act on what you believe. See, just say, hey, yeah, I believe the Lord's going to give us the promised land. He's going to give you all the blessings. He's gonna, we're going to take down. Until I take a step, i got to step out. i got to step out. And then when I st step out, you see, i got to step out. And then he says, basically, stand still. Stand in the river. So the priests are supposed to go out there and they're standing in the river. And he says, okay, now wait for further instruction. This is not uncommon with God. You know, and, and in, the, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, it says, Abraham, when God called him out of Ur of Chaldee, he left not knowing where he was going. You see, God said, leave, go, take a step. And when he took the step of faith, he got to Herod. He says, okay, now we're going to go down to the promised land I'm giving you. God doesn't give you everything all at once. You know why? He wants you to trust him every step of the way. He wants you to trust him every step of the way. I had journeys like that in my days of college. I, I chose a college to go to, and I packed up everything I had, and I moved across the whole state of Pennsylvania. I was in Michigan here at the time. I went all the way across the state of Michigan. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a place to stay. I, I moved. I, I, I was going to school. I had a family. And, and I went there. I couldn't get anybody to rent me a place. I'm sure God wanted me there. You know, I was going to be studying at the seminary, Westminster Theological Seminary. And uh, I'm filling out this application at a, at a place. And, and the guy says, you know, job references I have, I said, I have, I don't know a soul in, in Philadelphia. I just know that God told me, come here, you go to school. So the person around the counter filled in their friends for me. <laughs> 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 they filled it in and said, you got a job? I don't have a job yet. I'm looking, I, mean, I got to have a place to stay at. I got to find a job. And said, oh, well, you got to find a job. And they put down, I'm going to make so much. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm moving into this place. But that's how much faith I had at that time. I packed up everything and I took it there with me. And now I'm looking for a place to put it. Now, most people do it the other way around. You go find a place and bring all your stuff. I took it the first time. I said, God's, gonna, God's calling me to this place. I get a little nervous there because, you know, I stepped out and I'm standing still and I'm saying, wait, Lord, I need a place to put my stuff. He said, this is. He says, go out and stand in the water and wait. Just stand in the river. Because part of this standing out, he said, listen, Joshua said to the Israelites, 
Come here and listen to the words of the Lord. And that's what you do. You step out in faith, but you better have your Bible in your hand because you want to know what the Lord says about this. Because if you don't uh, lean on the Lord, stay in His Word, you're going to have second doubts about the step you took. But the Lord will reassure your heart that, hey, you're doing what the Lord wants you to do because of His Spirit will bear witness with your spirit as you read the Word of God that I'm doing what God wants me to do. Then you expect the miraculous. This is how you'll know that the living God is the one. Now, I, I, I find this more and more. People say, oh, where was God when this happened? Oh, why did God let this happen? The oh, full cannons. Are you following his lead? Is he on the throne? Are you stepping out in faith? Are you listening to his word? He said, this is how you know that the living God is among you. When you're doing those things, God is going to do volumes in your life. He says that, that he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Gergeshites, the Amorites, the Jebusites, and all the other rites. <laughs> is he promised to give victory? He didn't promise to fail. And you step out in faith, and you got you now you're expecting him to do something incredibly great. Incredibly great. He said, See the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. And so he's told him to do this. And as soon as the priests who are carrying the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth. And that's who our God is. <coughs> As soon as they set their foot in the Jordan River, the waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in a heap. And so the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan was at its flood stage. It wasn't like it was down to a trickle. You just didn't have to cross a few stones. It's overflowing. Yet as soon as the priests who were carrying the Ark reached the Jordan, their feet touched the water's edge, something incredible happened. The water from upstream Stop flowing. It piled up into a great heap at a distance away at a town called Adam. And this town of Adam is about 25 miles to the north. God cut it off, giving plenty of room. There's a wide place to go across. So they're going to go across, he says, and it was in the vicinity of Zarathan. And while the waters were flowing down the sea to the Sea of Arabah, the Salt Sea of the Dead Sea, it was completely cut off. Whoa. I want to tell you something. I believe that is experiencing God's success. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, they stood firm on dry ground. What was that happening today of Moses? Oh, the wind blew. They didn't even take a wind blew. God just dried this stuff up. It was on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan while all of Israel passed by until the whole nation had gone by on dry ground. For the Lord, your God, dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. He said, and this is in the next chapter after it happened, he's repeating it for the Lord your God. He dried up the, the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. And the Lord your God did to Jordan just what he had done to the Red Sea when he had dried it up before us when we had crossed over. I want to suggest to you that just what he had done to the Red Sea, he had now done to the Jordan. I call this the deja vu. Same thing. Only thing is, you see, Joshua didn't need them to split the Red Sea. Joshua needed them to split the Jordan River. I don't know what the obstacle is in your life from getting to you from where you are to the land of God's blessing. I don't know what that obstacle is. It could be your job, it could be your friend, it could be a spouse, it could be it could be a number of things. It could be a covetous heart. It could be anger in your heart. It could be depression. It could be just about anything. 
It's the obstacle that keeps you from enjoying the blessings that come with being where God wants you to be. It's the obstacle that prevents you from going over and, and possessing the wonderful Christian life. In chapter Hebrew, of uh, chapter 12 of Hebrews, it says, Lay aside every sin that so easily besets us. We all have that thing that besets us. Where, where we say to ourselves, if it weren't for that one thing, then I could just live the perfect Christian life. But that one thing, and what he's saying here is, man, listen, you need to have that thing broken and split. You need to follow his leading, have him on the throne. You need to step out in faith. You need to be in his word so that you are making the progress so that God, God, does the deja vu moment. And he splits the waters. He splits the problem. And he allows you to pass through. That's a deja vu moment. That's experiencing God's success. God doesn't want you to forget it. He didn't want the, the Israelites to forget uh, the, the whole experience in Egypt and the Exodus and passing through the Red Sea. And so every year they had to celebrate Passover. That's it. was a memorial. Every year they had to, had to remember it. When they passed through these waters, the Lord said, Tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan. So hey, there the priests around on dry ground. And they, you have to pick up 12 stones. I don't think these were little pebbles that you put in your pocket. I was down in Florida this last week. Helped my brother drive straight through Florida. And uh, we went swimming in the Gulf, snorkeling actually. And then we would dive down and you know, we'd try to get things off the bottom. We got some shells and we got some sand dollars. We got different things. And we were looking for shark's teeth, okay? Anyway, but yeah, we were doing, doing this. And, and uh, so we, we would bring those things up. And uh, here this passage Lord said, tell them to take the 12 stones. I wasn't bringing up any big ones. I was bringing up little stuff. And I think we had like a dozen of uh, those sand dollar fish. And we gave them some people on the shore because uh, we were going to take them. But and, and, and they were bringing up pretty good sized stones. Because he says, carry them um, with you and put them down in the place where you are to stay. There they would pile them up. They pile up the stones. And the next part of the text says, in the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. The Lord gave us a memorial. We're going to do it next Sunday morning. We'll pull the Lord's supper table down, have it right here, and we'll pull the elements on it. And Jesus said this, Bread is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. It's a memorial. We take the cup. This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this often, as often as you drink it. Remembrance of me. It's a memorial. And we're supposed to be teaching through this. It's memorial. He said, by doing this, you proclaim the Lord's death. It's all about the death of Christ. That at, at the death of Christ, you know, there, there was a splitting that took place. In the, in the temple, there was a curtain between the holy place and the most holy. God was, was dwelled in the most holy. And it says, the moment that Jesus died, that was rent. It was split from the top to the bottom. Not from the bottom up. From the top to the bottom. God split it saying, I just made a way for you to pass over. Not into the promised land, but to pass over into eternal life. Through my blood shed on the cross. Don't forget what it costs to save your soul. These memorial stones that they piled up for to say, don't ever forget that the God who split the Red Sea split the Jordan and he can split the obstacle that's before you that you're facing right now because he is the Lord God of heaven and earth. Here's my point. The whole point I'm going to For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. 
You know, he didn't write that down for those people back then. They lived it. They didn't need it. They didn't have to have that. Oh, yeah, man, I was there. I crossed the Red Sea. Oh, yeah, I was there. You know, I, I, I watched them pile up those stuff. I, they were written down so that through endurance and encouragement of scriptures, we might have hope. We might have hope. Go well, another place. First Corinthians says this. These things happen to them as examples of what God can do. Now, I don't need them to split the Red Sea. At some point, I might need them to split the Detroit River, but I don't need them to split the Red Sea. You know what I mean? I need them to split the obstacles in my life that prevent me from getting to the blessings God has for me. He says they're written down as warnings for us on whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. Here's my whole point. What he has done in the past, he can repeat at any time he chooses. That gives me hope. That gives me hope. And I've got a problem with my finances. My God can split that wide open. Now i got a problem with my kids. God can split that thing wide open. At any time he chooses, I can have one of these great deja vu moments in my life. There seem to be some criteria, though. You have to follow the Lord's leading. You have to consecrate yourself. You have to step out in faith. You have to stand still and listen for God's instruction. When you're, you know, you're, you're there in Philadelphia saying, okay, I brought everything I need to place. And God will split things open. You know why I know? Luke 137 says, for nothing is impossible to God. Nothing. Can you think of anything? Nothing. Nothing is impossible. Father in heaven, I would imagine right now that everyone here, myself included, has thought of the obstacle that's my barrier. It's the Red Sea, it's the Jordan River of my life, keeping me from crossing over into all the blessings. And it's the thing that so easily besets me and makes me go and retreat. Father, today, those of us who are like that, we ask that you would increase our faith. Father, that we, we would consecrate ourselves, devote ourselves to your leading, not ours, no one else. We would follow where you want us to go. That we would step out, and even when it's scary, Lord, to step out. And we will wait to hear from you for your word, that you will give us encouragement and hope. And Lord, we will believe and expect you to do the miraculous, the mighty, the powerful. Just as you did in the days of Moses, the Red Sea, Joshua, the Jordan River, that you'll split my obstacle in half too, that I might pass through it, reach the other side of the blessings you have for this I pray in Jesus' name.
don't know about you, but I'm on a deja vu God experience moment in my life. And in order for that to happen, I got to find Him and follow His lead. Devote myself to Him. Step out in faith. While I'm out there, stand still, listen for the next instructions, and expect great things. For my God, with my God, nothing is impossible. Father in heaven, dismiss us with great faith in our hearts that you will do great deeds. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I invite you to return this evening for our final three Sunday evenings in September. Uh, we're talking about the Jesus of life. God bless you. Have a wonderful words.